Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we are going to get caught up on news. Uh, we have big changes in the Kudu organization. Uh, one general manager candidate has appeared for the Sharks and we're going to know the Sharks' newest member, um, Mitchell Russell, who is signed today. So all that and more on today's Locked on Sharks. Let's get at it. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young. Kyle got snagged with a work thing and uh, a little too busy tonight, unfortunately, could not make it. But that's okay. We will forge on. First of all, I want to thank you guys for making us your first San Jose Sharks listen. Um, Of course, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. We just hit the 800 mark, so congratulations to you guys helping us reach that monetization. We're almost there. 200 left to go. So um we'll get we'll we'll do a martin jones bobblehead giveaway here soon i gotta kind of figure out how i want to do that this time but um so yeah uh pay it keeping you know keep an eye on us with social media youtube we'll figure something out um but thank you guys for, of course for uh for subscribing listening every day uh helping the podcast grow we really appreciate it but the big news i gotta start out with is the roy sommer news so of course um uh, the Barracuda made a huge change. Roy Sommer had been behind the bench for the uh, San Jose Sharks, uh, or San Jose Barracuda, Worcestershire Sox, their, their AHL affiliate for the past 24 years. And he was uh, promoted, I guess, sent to the front office. Um, and then longtime Barracuda, uh, John McCarthy, who was an uh, assistant uh, manager for the team, kind of been hanging around, you know, longtime captain for the Barracuda. Uh, he will be taking over the reins as the Barracuda's coach going forward. Um, they basically cleared house with all the assistants. You know, um, Bones was, uh, you know, he's went back to his scouting. They, you know, um, most of the other coaches are no longer with the organization. So, I mean, this is a new chapter for the Barracuda, which have been, you know, kind of, very much the same for the past few years, you know, especially with, with Roy Sommer being back there. The only time he really wasn't back there was when Pete DeWar was fired and he had to, you know, kind of step in because the car, the Sharks literally had no coaches um, other than Bob Bugner at the time. So, but I mean, the, this is a big step for the organization. The Barracuda definitely didn't have the season they wanted. I mean, that, that roster was not good at all. But, I mean, losing 15 games in a row probably didn't help either. I know Roy Sommer wasn't wasn't kind of dealt the best hand there. But it's it's just tough when, you know, you miss the playoffs. And uh, we, we've heard this from the organization. Doug Wilson Jr. said on the San Jose Hockey Now podcast, you know, winning breeds winning. Um, Joe Will said it, winning breeds winning. And, you know, you see the, the Sharks have made – already made a ton of effort to try to revamp this CUDA – the team, um, you know, they're, they're opening up a new barn coming this this fall. They've got new jerseys. You know, they have an influx of talent coming in. And it felt like this, to them, this might have been the right time to kind of make this move. Um, again, you know, with Roy Sommer, he's definitely an old school coach. He's been doing it for a long time. You know, he's won a lot of games. But I, I think... For the Sharks, it was one of those things where they had to look at if they really wanted Somers to be behind the bench when you're you've got your next core of pieces coming in, right? You've got your, you know, Tristan Robbins is going to be there, Brandon Coe, Ozzy Weisblatt, Daniel Gushin. You've you've got you know Mitchell Russell's, is, and you have Strauss Mann. You had some of the defensemen, you know, Hadika and and uh, Knizev, who you know played last year. Like you have these guys are going to be core pieces or, or hopefully you know contributors to the sharks in the next couple of years and you want to make sure that their development that they're getting the best possible you know assets or resources to them and i 
I think with John McCarthy, I mean, I know he hasn't been a coach, but I mean, he he's played and, you know, he's, he's gone through the grind of being, you know, a, a lifer in, in the AHL and, you know, he's younger and maybe can connect to the, the guys a little bit more. And you just hope and like, you know, big thing is, you know, he was a developmental coach for the Barracuda and going, you know, his press conference, he said, you know, we're not going to have assistant coaches. We're going to, we're going to re kind of structure. We're going to have developmental coaches. So, I mean, everyone's going to have their responsibility, but the big thing is that it's such a big focus on developmental developmenting, developmenting, developmenting. And with the sharks, they know, you know, they're, of course they're trying to rebuild on the fly, but you know, you can't screw up this 2020 draft class, which, or this 20, you know, the, these guys coming in, you think about the, you have the 2020 draft class, you have the 2021 draft class. I mean, I don't expect Eklund to be playing in the AHL very, you know, much if at all, but like, you know, Goudreau is going to be coming soon. LaRock's going to be coming in a couple of years. You have Cardwell who, you know, is going to be fighting to make the coup to this team. You have, um, and then whoever you select in the 22 draft class, like, again, those guys aren't going to be making an impact right away, but like, these guys are that are you're picking right now and that are kind of these are going to be the guys who are producing for you soon and like you know the kuda have been so just void of talent i mean i know you know if you look back like ryan merkley you know first round pick who played for them and he kind of had a up and down i mean he played well for the, the kuda this year until he got when it got called up by the sharks but like they just haven't had a lot of talent on paper come like on there you know most of the players are your blickfields your your sasha's you know guys like that who are sixth seventh round picks or late picks because the sharks just haven't had um guys and even then they're you know the high picks that they have like your dylan hamlicks they just haven't made an impact yet so i think it, they they saw this juncture especially with the new building opening up this influx of talent you they want to make sure they get this right and getting a guy who's going to be about developing making sure that they're going from that they're getting ready to play nhl games that they're learning those skills and especially with the way the nhl is going where it's so skilled i mean you look at your your colorados and you know like your i know the panthers aren't doing super well right now but like your lightning like where it's just it's all about their skilled players and i'm not expecting you know, Brandon Coe to be the next Braden Point or just, you know, stuff like that. But like, you got to try to get these guys in the best possible position to develop. And, you know, Roy Somers was a great coach, but I just, I don't know if he's the right person at the right time right now for, for the, where the Sharks organization is heading. And you, again, you cannot mess up the development of these guys or else you're going to be Re, re having to reset it all and redo it all and you're gonna it's gonna push everything back another three to five years so this off season is the most important off season for the sharks and that starts every level you know you got to get the gm higher right you got to make sure you have the right people you know in place in the coaching staff you got to make sure your development's right all your scouts right this off season if if they get it right this off season and they get the right pieces. This is what gets the Sharks back on track to being a playoff contender and hopefully one day lifting the prize Stanley Cup. Before we get into potential Sharks GMs, let's take a quick break and talk to you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar just came out with some new stuff. Right now they have a Brownie batter puff. I like brownies, but you know what I like more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I like to eat just the batter while I'm making the brownies, even though I know you're not supposed to, but looking especially clean, it's all gone. But could you imagine that? Plus you get protein. Like this is amazing. Bill Bart, they've got a new creation, the brownie batter puff. If it's anything like the birthday cake puff, you can count me in. This puff takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. You tried the puffs yet? You don't know what you're missing if you haven't tried them yet. They are marshmallows that have been, like, squished into a bar, and then they cover them with chocolate and make them amazing. So each one's covered in 100% real chocolate, and you don't have to worry about the, you know, you know all the calories and stuff like that. It's only 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, 17 grams of sugar for the brownie batter puffs. The perfect pick-me-up for any day. 
all built puffs are covered in 100 chocolates that means you get uh with built you can eat healthy and actually enjoy eating it so head over to built.com get your brownie puff batter uh now because our limited time thing so go to build.com use the promo code lock 15 get 15 percent off your order again use promo code lock 15 for 15 percent off at built.com all right sharks fans take a deep breath i know pierre lebron tweeted to you know thursday night about ray whitney elliot friedman dropped it in his, his 32 thoughts about ray whitney guys the Sharks aren't hiring Ray Whitney, okay? Here's why. This is the Sharks doing the NHL solid. Shane Peng had an article in San Jose Hockey Now recently where they were talking about, like he said, if you want to get a GM job, go work for the NHL, right? Ray Whitney currently works for the NHL Department of Safety. I don't know what they actually do because they're not very good at their jobs. But anyway, the Sharks, when they came out, you know, Doug Wilson stepped down and they came out and said, we're going to do a vast search. We have 50 people on our candidate. We're going to do 20 to 25 interviews, you know, all stones unturned, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to take our time with this. That's fine. They, they so the NHL kind of has some, you know, has, has some influences I think what they did is they went to the Sharks like, hey, do you mind interviewing our dude here, Ray Whitney? Get, you know, throw us, throw us a little bone. It's gonna be one of those stepping stone things, right? If you come work for the NHL and then you eventually get a GM job down the road. We've seen, you know, Rob Blake, we've Shanahan, we've seen this with guys, right? But Ray Whitney's not getting a job right now. This is a stepping stone thing. Interviews with the Sharks. They're going to be like, hey, man, good interview. You know, here's what, if you don't mind working on, like, a, you know, X, Y, Z, work on these things. And then maybe next year, another GM job comes up. Well, you know, Team X. Hey, we should interview Ray Whitney. He interviewed with the Sharks last year. You know, maybe he makes it down to like a finalist or, you know, a second interview, et cetera, et cetera. Next year, year after that. You know, same thing. Hey, work on X, Y, Z. If you after that, Ray Whitney, potential GM candidate. So it's a stepping stone thing. The Sharks are, you know, they're helping the NHL get their guy out, try to kind of build him up. I mean, the Sharks are such a tight-lipped organization. I know we've said if Pierre LeBron tweets about it or something like that, that is, you know, coming from the Sharks organization. But again, like the Sharks are so tight-lipped about everything. Why is this the only candidate that we are actually confirmed with an interview? Why isn't Pierre LeBron, you know, like, hey, this guy's interviewed or this person's interviewed. It's just been the one person. And it's little nuggets from, you know, on Elliot Friedman, little nuggets on, you know, from Pierre LeBron. It was just a Zoom interview. They're doing the league a favor. That's fine. Part of the process. If the Sharks had come out and said, like, yeah, we got like three candidates that we're looking at, I don't think Ray Whitney's involved. Like, if they've said, hey, we've got like three to five candidates, I don't, you know, I think the, they would have kind of boxed themselves in, right? But since they came out and said, hey, we're looking at a bajillion candidates right now, it's fine if they take the time to look in. And who knows? Maybe Ray Whitney's got a master plan of like, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do. You know, we're going to trade Brett Burns. We're going to buy out Mark Edward Vlasic. We're going to blow it up. But here's what I'm going to do to get the Sharks to become winners again soon. And maybe, you know, the Sharks are impressed. But I just don't see a guy who's really his only front office. You know, he scouted for the Canes from like the 2015 to 2018. Like, I just don't see a guy like that jumping from – doing some scouting, working from the league office to general manager. And again, it could happen. I just, I don't think this is right. And I, I talked about before where this is the most important off season for the Sharks, right? They're talking about winning breeds winning. They're talking about doing everything right, getting the development right, finding the right people for, at the right time. And are we sure Ray Whitney is, is that guy who can, 
is the right person at the right time. And I know they're, they're saying they don't mind, you know, trying to go out of the box, you know, whatever, stuff like that. But again, I would just be, I would be shocked if they went with this hire, just because again, he's, it's not like he has front office. He hasn't been part of a winning organization that's, you know, kind of developed their players. Like if, you know, if the Sharks hire someone from, you know, the, the Avs or from the Lightning or, you know, some of the guys that we talked about where, you know, they've kind of worked their way through and stuff. And that, that, that seems like the right person for the right, at the right time. And again, who knows, Ray Whitney might blow them out of the water with this interview. I just, I don't, I don't feel like this is, he's the right candidate for the Sharks right now, especially with, such a crucial timing in the organization. And another thing they've said it's going to take a long process. All right. When you go look for cars, do you buy the first car that you see on the lot? Not really. Usually you, you shop around kick some tires. You might test drive a couple, you know, but like, I just, why is this the only name we've heard is just Ray Whitney. And he works for the NHL. And the NHL is basically saying, if you want to get hired as a GM, come work for us. I get that. I just, I think it's a stepping stone thing. So take a deep breath. The Sharks are going to find the right, the right person. I, I believe they can. I believe they will. They're going to find the right person for the, to, for them. It's too important that they get this right. And, you know, especially with all the changes happening in the organization, they can't screw this up. And I, I just, I, I just, I don't see how Ray Whitney is, is your answer right now. So yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break. Talk about uh, our friends over at Battle Line. And then we're going to get to know the newest shark in the San Jose Sharks organization. But first, Battle Line, guys, your partner, our partners at Battle Line continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info, find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs and hockey playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next year's NFL futures. Again, hammer the Dolphins over. BetOnline is your continuous source for all your sports wager information, from my betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, so the Sharks also signed uh, Mitchell uh, Russell uh, to a three-year entry-level contract today uh, forward for the uh, North Bay Battalion. If that team sounds familiar, it's because our one Brandon Coe uh, plays on that team, and he's actually a line mate uh, with Mitchell Russell. So Mitchell Russell... Um, 21 years old. Uh, he's six foot, 194 pounds, uh, right wing center position. So um, I think he'll probably play wing if I had to guess, but you never know. So he was actually originally drafted by the Owen Sound Attack in the, uh, I think he was the 20th pick um, in the 17, or he, you know, back in, I think, the 2017 OHL draft. Um, played for them for about, um, a season and a half. It didn't really go. Like, it went okay. Um, his first year in 59 games, you know, when he, he was a baby, he had uh, seven points. Um, and then the next season in 33 games, he had 11 points. Gets traded to the North Bay Battalion, uh, where he has in 32 games, he has 13 points, including eight goals, five assists. Um, the 1920 season, he starts to kind of take off 51 goals. I guess I can have his little uh, card up here too. So. Uh, 51 goals in, uh, or 51 games, sorry, 21 goals, 21 assists, 42 points. Of course, this is the 2021 season uh, due to COVID, or, you know, how OHL was shut down. But this season really exploded. Um, so, you know, him, Co, um, you know, really that, that top line for the North Bay Battalion. So they had in 64 games, he had 41 goals, 47 assists for 88 points in the playoffs right now. They play North Bay Battalions played nine games. He has 11 goals, 11 assists for 22 points in that time. So, um, you know, I, I cut some highlights and put them on my Twitter. 
So kind of the things that stood out for me was um, he's got a pretty decent shot, especially when he's shooting from the dot, like each of the face-off dots. He very accurate. Um, he's got good hands. I don't know. I think Brandon Coe might have a little bit better hands, just especially in tight spaces. Um, you know, he's got very good, uh, really good vision, really good backhand too. Like there's a, uh, you know, in one of the clips I cut where he makes a, he's going down the, the left side. He sees Co on the right side, makes a backhand kind of saucer pass, you know, across, across the entire rink. Um, and then Co kind of does his thing as well on that. Now that leads to an overtime goal, but, you know, great point production, um, great, uh, you know, the, I think, you know, great point production for the, for the North Bay Battalion really kind of came into his own. Um, you know, I think this is a good signing. You know, Doug Wilson Jr. said on the San Jose Hockey Now podcast where they want to try to add talent to the Barracuda. Again, like I talked about earlier, where, you know, the Barracuda, you got a new, you know, new barn, new talent, new sweaters, new coach. You know, they, they really want to try to get players who can help out the, the Barracuda and, you know, I know he's he's an overager right now, but you know he him and Co have already kind of shown that chemistry. And we talked about the you know we talked about the forwards on Wednesday with the Barracuda, and it was like there's really not much there right now. You know, Jochen Blickfeld might be back. Sasha Shimolevsky, you know, is probably going to be fighting for an NHL job. Um, but like, there's just not a lot of talent. I think taking a swing on this guy, where you know he's shown that he can score in the OHL and, you know, give him an opportunity to try to succeed um, on the Barracuda and see what he can do, you know, on a team that they're really trying to revamp and make the Cuda fun again. Um, you know, and there's going to be a, plenty of talent. They're, they're trying to have plenty of competition. And I think, you know, he's a guy who's, who's definitely developed and um, he's more than worth, you know, taking a swing on. And, you know, it's, three-year ELC contract. If, if it doesn't work out, that's fine. It's not like it's, you know, it's not going to kill you over the next three seasons. So yeah, let him, let him develop in the, on the CUDA, see if he's got something there, if he can continue to kind of progress the way he's progressed. And, you know, you maybe you found one of these diamond in the rough guys who just needed a, a chance. So all right, guys, thank you guys for making us your first listen. Of course, um, check out the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, you can, of course, listen to us um, wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Megaphone, Anchor, Odyssey. You guys know. Um, YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe. Inching closer to the 1,000. That's the goal. Try to get to 1,000 by the draft. We got like six weeks left. So, you know, we got to make sure you guys keep subscribing. We really appreciate it. It really does mean a lot to us that you guys uh, support the show. Um, also, of course, go check out uh, the Locked On NHL show if you want to keep up with everything that's going on in the playoffs. Um, of course, you know, you guys don't want to hear us talk about the playoffs for some reason. But um, you can find me on Twitter at my fry hole. Kyle is that Kyle Demetrius. And thanks again. Make it your first listen. Go check out one of the other shows, such as uh, let's go locked on flames. Bye, friends. <laughs>